in-person versus self-tapes. Hey actors, I'm Matthew Coymel with Get Taped here in Atlanta, Georgia, one of Atlanta's original audition taping services. And now on to our topic, in-person auditions versus self-taped auditions. If you live in the Southeast, then you've become used to self-taping almost all of your auditions, especially when it comes to TV and film. In Atlanta, it all started around 2005 when season two of Army Wives started soliciting tapes from around the region. And since then, the self-tape revolution or evolution has exploded. And over the years, I've had many debates with actors and even myself, over the pros and cons of in-person auditions versus self-taped auditions. So today I'd like to provide some of that insight that I've gained over the years that might illuminate different ideas about the differences between these two types of auditions. Round one, the benefits of in-person. Well, the benefits of in-person auditions should be fairly obvious, but let's go over a few of those. You get to connect directly with the casting director. Nothing can substitute for that in-person connection with the casting director because you know they represent sort of the gatekeeper to this opportunity. And along with that, you get to be redirected by that casting director so that when you leave the audition, you feel more secure that you gave them what they wanted. You also get to feel the vibe in the room, whether it's just the casting director or maybe it's a callback and there are multiple people in the room. And that live energy can help actors figure out what they need to do to win the room or book the room. Speaking of which, the performance itself feels like a live performance. You get the rush of performing in front of people and have that immediate feedback in the room as it's happening, which really there's no substitute for. For some actors, they enjoy the community aspect of seeing fellow actors in the waiting room getting to catch up and talk about the business, talk about personal lives. All in all, it feels like you're building relationships when you go to in-person auditions with the casting director, with their assistants, and with the fellow actors that might be in the waiting room. Plus, it's free. Round two, the cons of in-person auditions. Are there any cons? Yes, there are. First of all, you might get a specific appointment time that conflicts with your day job or other things going on in your life, and you have to have that awkward conversation where you ask for a different time and you don't want to make the casting director mad, or you have to miss the audition altogether because they can't manipulate the schedule at all. Furthermore, the audition might be a mile away from your house, in which case, you're lucky. Or it might be 450 miles away, like Tampa, or New Orleans, Wilmington. And of course, when you have to drive that far, it not only eats up your whole day or days, but it's also going to cost you in gas money and wear and tear on your car. So a free audition in New Orleans could cost you $60 in gas if you have an efficient car, plus $125 in a hotel if you have to stay overnight plus the incidental costs of the wear and tear on your car and the headshots that you have to have printed. In other words, in-person auditions never have been free, so to speak. Also, if you're the type of actor who doesn't like to see other actors in the waiting room because you want to be in your headspace preparing for your audition, then the presence of other actors can actually feel like it's sabotaging your performance. And that can be a downside to the in-person experience. And this last point is going to be controversial. Maybe. Some casting directors are former actors, in which case, when they're reading with you, they're connected and they're helping you have the best performance possible. On the other hand, the vast majority of casting directors don't have an acting background. So what happens is when they're standing there reading with you, they're simultaneously judging you while they're reading. And while that's their job, it presents an additional challenge to the actor. Because now, you're expecting me to give my best performance to submit to the imaginary circumstances of this world to be connected to that other character or characters and yet the person that I'm supposed to be connected to is not in the scene with me. Instead, they're staring at me with these judging eyeballs which can raise the anxiety level of any actor. And some casting directors have the viewpoint of, well, if you can't handle that in my room, then how can I expect you to handle being on set when there are 50 people staring at you? Fair point, except that on set, my fellow co-star and I are building a bubble of safety around us. We are ignoring all of those other people, and it's just me and that other person connecting, believing in the given circumstances, and hopefully delivering authentic, believable performances. That makes it much easier to deal with all those external pressures. So unless I have a co-star that's in a bad mood, or is just 
disrespectful to other actors, or if I have a director that is, is likewise being disrespectful to me, then it is actually much easier with 50 people staring at me than having one person who I'm supposed to be connecting with staring at me and judging me. And in the 20 years I've been doing this, from the no-budget indie film sets all the way up to the $150 million blockbuster films, I've only had a couple experiences where either my co-star wasn't actually in it with me, or they physically couldn't be in it with me and I had to act to a tennis ball or a piece of tape, or I had a director that was in a bad mood or was being disrespectful to me. The vast majority of experiences have been delightful where my co-star is doing everything they can to be in the scene with me to elevate my performance, which in turn makes me elevate their performance. What I'm getting at is that what happens in a casting room bears little resemblance to what happens on a set. It's like going to tryouts for the baseball team, and when you get up to the plate to show off your batting skills, instead of throwing baseballs, the coach is throwing boomerangs at you. And you're thinking, whoa, this is unfair. And then the coach says, well, hey, if you can't hit a boomerang, then how can I expect you to hit baseballs when it comes game time? And you're thinking, okay, I don't quite get it, but I guess I'll play by your rules. That's kind of a weird analogy. But you get my point. In short, that casting director actor relationship can sometimes serve to build up the actor's performance, but there are times where that interaction can actually be an obstacle to that actor doing their best work. Round three, the benefits of self-taping. You can tape at home. How glorious is that? Or you can go to the taping service of your choice, get taped, schedule a time that fits your schedule, and feel comfortable with a reader whom you've maybe previously established a relationship with, or at least feel comfortable with in that room. Depending on the taping service or your home setup, you can use tables and chairs and other minimal props to help set the stage and make you feel more grounded and connected to the scene. Because as long as it doesn't show up in the frame, like all of this random crap in the background here, then it's not distracting to the casting director. Side note, don't go crazy with props that actually show up in the frame. The other major benefit of the self-taping experience is being able to do multiple takes. If you have that stutter, that stumble, or if you get an idea after doing your first take, you can do another take. This also means you can explore different approaches to the character, have time to watch back those takes, and select the best one, or in some cases, select two takes that you might submit for that audition. In short, the self-tape gives you more ownership over the performance, and therefore more ownership over your career. Round four, the cons of self-tapes. First of all, you might have technical challenges trying to figure out how to create a home setup with lighting, sound, camera, editing, compression, uploading, etc. If you go to a taping service or you have a friend come over to be a reader, you might get someone who fancies themselves a casting director and is giving you unsolicited advice. And that can create a really weird environment and might even sabotage your whole audition. The safety of self-taping in a relaxed environment can lull you into a sense of complacency where you don't do as much prep work, you do too many takes, you're sort of figuring it out as you go along, and then you will not be prepared when you do arrive on set and suddenly the pressure is on. Without feedback from the casting director, you're left to your own choices and that is paralyzing to a lot of actors. And finally, when there's no in-person auditions ever, well, then you really feel disconnected from that casting director. And it just feels like you're acting into a vacuum, never getting any feedback unless you book. And then that feels like implied feedback. But it's very rare to have that face-to-face, one-on-one connection with the casting director. And for actors who love establishing connections with people, real or imaginary, that's a real downside. There are, of course, many more nuances to this discussion of in-person auditions versus self-taped auditions. If you have any thoughts, please share them below. We'll also have links to our Get Taped website where you can schedule your next audition with us down in the description below. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on set.